welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan. I'll be your host today. And then today we have Mitch. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am a plumber for the last 30 years. I'm married for the last 22. I raised all three of my kids, homeschooled them all the way through high school. Three young adult children right now doing very well. And I'm a Bible-believing, Jesus-following Christian that God's called in this season to stand up and run for office. What do you think about abortion and uh, California want to be a sanctuary state mm. for abortion? Mm. And actually, there was uh, this city. They voted to be a pro-life sanctuary, and then it got rejected, mm -hmm. just a few strikes. So what are your thoughts on abortion, this issue? I don't even like the word abortion because it masks what, what's actually happening, is a life is being ended. And when we say abortion, it makes it sound innocuous. But in fact, we are ending a life of a human in, in likely the most sacred, safe spot it should have on this earth, the mother's yes. womb. Yes. I think that's really unfortunate. They try to use words to make it seem less bad. Abortion, pro-choice, they use these terms. But what I consider is that what we've done in our society with teaching our kids about sex in the schools, and they're, they're even trying to put Planned Parenthood in the schools in LA County. Yeah. What I think about is our society has taught our children that promiscuity is, is okay. And the result of that demoralization in our society is all of these young pregnancies. When we're talking about abortion, that's mostly where they come from is these young ladies that get pregnant and the only choice they're given from our society is to go and have an abortion. They're not told about the other options available out there. There are other options. There's choices for life. Yes. There's opportunities for those kids to be born and be adopted by families that need it, that need it, that want to have a child and can't have one of their own. And the truth is the adoption rate is actually a hundred percent. There's actually a wait list for there is. newborn There's babies. There's a giant wait list. And there's much more, I believe, as the, the church can do to stand up and help support. There's that organization over at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. They're trying to help assist these young mothers. They're having baby showers for these young pregnant moms okay. and showing them there's a better way and, and showing them that we can help you through the entire process. We can be there for you the whole way through. And I think it's important for the church and for the people in our state to stand up and give these women, these young moms, better options. Abortion is no option at all. But that's the only option we're telling them. And my heart breaks. I can't even imagine what it must be like to be a young woman that gets pregnant, not planning on it, and the fear that would set in because you don't know what to do. And then the only thing they give you as an option is to go have that baby's life terminated. I think there's more we can do, more options we can give. I think abortion should be illegal in our state. I think that is a possibility that could happen. I think that's part of the reason why we have God's judgment on our nation now is because of the innocent lives that have been lost through abortion over the years. I think it's up to 60 or 70 million abortions have occurred uh, since Roe versus Wade. Yeah, and I think it's ironic that all the Hollywood movie, when they have babies, they actually go through with the baby and then all the stories about how these two, they just hook up for a night and then the girl got pregnant and then they, they end up loving each other and decided to have a baby. It's a beautiful thing. Even Hollywood, the most leftist liberal system is saying that. Even our school is telling our young people, hey, just kill your baby. Yeah. It's your freedom. It means you're free. It's such a satanic procedure and such a satanic thing to have for our young girls. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's the only thing they're being taught. That's right. Do you think there's any governmental solution about abortion right now in California? I think we're a long ways away from getting to a point where we can change the laws effectively. We should certainly put a stop to any of it being in our schools. It's an uphill battle because we have a super majority of Democrats in California. One of my goals is, if I do get elected, is when you do. when I get when you, elected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is to is to find those Democrats that call themselves Christians and have conversations with them about the importance of standing for life and about standing up for parents' rights, standing up for morality in our society. Because if we can have real conversations, even with some of those Democrats, if they say they believe in God. 
I believe that God can even change some of their hearts, because I know he can. And uh, if we can get enough votes, we can change the laws in California to protect the kids in our education system, mm -hmm. as well as possibly even outlaw abortion in our state. With God, I believe there's a possibility. I also think it's a possibility, because this state actually voted no on uh, Prop 8 against mm -hmm. gay marriage, mm -hmm. too. So I think this state was very conservative just 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but I don't know how it gets to this position right now. What do you think happened during uh, these 10 years, 10, 20 years? I think there's a couple of things that happened. The news media, by and large, uses propaganda mm -hmm. to sway the opinions of the public. They've been promoting wickedness uh, for a long time, and I think that affects people. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of young people these days agree with abortion. They think that pro-choice is the moral choice, yeah. and that's because of that propaganda. I think part of it is the church has not been effective as it should be in, in standing up in our society. Yeah, not only the church, I think family. Mm -hmm. Moral values start with the family. Yes. Because family should just tell you, hey, you need to have responsibility. Don't have sex before marriage and get a job. Right. When you're in high school, study, don't just have random sex with different stranger. This will solve a lot of a abortion lot of problems. problems. And when they talk about pro-choice, yeah, everyone should have choices with their body. You can decide who you're going to have sex with, who, when, and how, is whatever you want. But the baby is actually the product of your action, mm -hmm. and you need to be responsible for all your action. I think that idea need to put into young people's yes, mind. right. I'm pro-choice. Yeah. <laughs> but murder isn't a choice. Exactly. So yeah, I, I agree with you completely. Also, a lot of the problem is our election system here in California. With the mail-in ballots and all of those things, they've uh, saturated our state and our counties and our cities with a lot of extra votes. I don't think our state has gone as far left as they'd have us believe. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of that's just a little bit of a mirage because they're able to do it. That scripture in Second Chronicles 7.14 mm -hmm. says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, the first thing, humbling themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God says, I'll hear from heaven forgive their sin and heal their land. So the very last thing we get, the only place in the scriptures where you see the prescription for the healing of a nation. And you go back to the beginning, the very first one is calls his people by his name to humble themselves. And then he says to pray and seek my face and then to turn from their wicked ways. But that first one is humble themselves. When I say the church, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that building everybody goes to on Sunday and Wednesday. Yeah. When I refer to the church, I'm referring to the families, I'm referring to the people, because that's what the church is, that's what the scriptures tell us the church is, is the people of God. If those people will humble themselves, and one of the things I think is going on in our, in our society is, we always talk about a lot of these uh, issues that everybody can agree on, but I see a lot of people at the church that I know, friends of mine, mm -hmm. that are Christians, that love Disneyland, but I know there's a lot of wickedness that comes out of Disneyland. And we have this comfortable American Christianity that's made us apathetic, and we allow sin and even take part in some of the things that support these organizations. Starbucks will pay for their employees to go across state lines if it's illegal to get an abortion in their state. They'll pay their employees travel expenses to go to another state to get an abortion. Every Sunday after church, I see everybody in line in Starbucks getting coffee. And that's because the people don't realize they need to repent. It's because they have pride. They think that they're doing good. And the first thing we need to do as God's people is humble ourselves. Mm -hmm. I believe there's hope if God's people will respond to him. Yeah. And uh, God's people have to be firm too, have to be bold, have to speak the truth. Mm -hmm. Like Book of Jonah is like one of my favorite books. He just go out there and speak the truth. And it's only six words. And then he turned the whole city around. Those people are not even God's people. Yep. So as a Christian, as a God's believer, I think we have the ability to do that. And we need to do that. We need to not be scared of any persecution. You know, Jonah was running from what God was calling him to do. Yeah. And I recognized that early on. I didn't want to do this job. Who wants to deal with the swamp? and politics. I have a very nice little life. I have a wife and kids and a garden in my backyard. And who wants to get involved? And I didn't want to do it. And I didn't want to do it. I was arguing with God over it. And he reminded me of Jonah. And he said, look, you're going to end up going to do what I'm telling you to do. The question is, Mitch, do you want to go in the belly of a whale first? And not that I'd be in the belly of a whale, but... <laughs> 
he makes it difficult for us if he's calling us to something and we don't want to go do it. So I agreed to get up and go do it. It's a great example, Jonah, because he did. He went to the city of pagans. Yes. They're fish worshipers. Yeah. And God in his wisdom had Jonah come out stinking like a fish so these people would listen to him. And God's wisdom so far above ours. And so if we just be obedient to what he calls us to do, he will do the work, turn our state and our nation around, I believe. And I believe there is an opportunity for one last season of grace. Our nation is not spoken of in the end times prophecies. I believe our nation will fall before then. But I believe we have a season of grace left if God's people will respond to him. I think God is a fair and just judgment. So whatever we do, we will be judged according to that. And whatever America or California does, we will be judged yeah. according to that. Okay, now in California, we have the strongest gun control in the whole entire country. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on gun control? Uh, that's how the people are able to protect themselves. When we talk about what kinds of weapons that people should be allowed to have, well, the reason why our founding fathers put that in there is so that colonists here in the United States could protect themselves against this invading armada from the largest army in the known world at the time. So when they put that in our Constitution, it was to protect the people's rights so that we could have weapons to stand up against an unruly government. Should we be able to have nuclear weapons? Maybe so, to protect ourselves from a government that would try to use the same weapons against us. So do I think we should have nuclear weapons? Not at all anywhere in our world, honestly. But as a a believer and as an American, I believe having that right to bear arms is for us to be able to protect ourselves, not just from the government, but from the bad guys. And they want to take away the guns of the good guys, of the people that are reasonable citizens. And then if they do that, the only people that are going to have guns are going to end up being these bad guys. Mm -hmm. It's going to put the good, reasonable citizens at risk. So I think taking away our gun rights is one of their first steps to implementing possibly tyranny. And so we need to stand up against that. We need to stand up for the rights of the people. I just read the news. IRS, they're going to hire, I think, 35,000 people, new people. And then uh, their job description is to use lethal force if necessary. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're trying to do? Is our government coming against us? Well, we could see by the raid on uh, that the FBI did on Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Yeah. He calls it the deep state. I want to be careful because I think there's good people in our FBI or in our law enforcement. But we can see that these people are trying to put us in fear and have authority over us Mm -hmm. to try to institute their rule instead of our constitutional republic rule. And when they try to take away our gun rights, that's what they're doing is they're, they're trying to get that one step closer to be able to enslave the people. And then the IRS, a few months ago, we were hearing the reports about them buying so many millions of rounds of ammunition. Uh-huh. And here we are a few months later, and now they're trying to pass a bill to hire another 87,000 IRS agents. And like you stated, a huge portion of those will be for enforcement. They're going to send these people out to regular people's homes with guns to intimidate them. Who are they going to go after? We have a two-tiered justice system. The good people are the ones they persecute, and the people who are doing evil, they don't. So when people say, well, if I haven't done anything wrong, I'm safe. That's not true. That's not true. In our, in our nation, these wicked people want to stifle and stop and even get rid of those of us who would stand up for truth and for what's right. Well, then uh, let's talk about your opponent this time. So my opponent is Bob Archuleta. He's a very nice man. He's a grandpa. He's a career politician. We talked about career politicians previously, but um, (laughs) he's one of those. I'm involved with the Whittier Chamber of Commerce, Whittier Area Chamber of Commerce. It's a very big uh, chamber. They're very active and they'll have events where there'll be two, three, four hundred people show up and one of the city officials inevitably every time we'll stand up and and talk about how Bob Archuleta gave five million dollars to the city of Whittier for Parnell Park and I always want to raise my hand and say he didn't donate five million dollars yeah he allocated five million taxpayer dollars of state funds to Whittier for Parnell Park it's not his money he didn't donate it and he did it for the purpose of what you're doing right now Mr. City Official you're announcing him our city council is a 5-0 conservative, Bible-believing uh, city council. And I, I believe all of them know Jesus, but it's quite frustrating because they'll get up and promote this Democrat who doesn't stand for the people. He's not a bad man. He's actually a very nice man. 
like I said, he's like a, he's a grandpa. He's a very a nice gentleman. I've sat with him and spoke with him a few times. The problem is, is he gets recognition and votes because people will talk about how he gave all of these millions of dollars and politics is all run by the money. He's yeah. allocating taxpayer funds from the state uh -huh. back to the city okay. and they're giving him credit for it. So he gets recognition and votes. Okay. He's basically buying votes with taxpayer money. But the job we elected him for is to go to the legislature and to stand up for the people when voting on legislation and when writing legislation. But he doesn't stand up for the people. He's not a crazy leftist that votes for crazy left-leaning things. He abstains from voting. He simply will not stand up for the people and vote. He abstains from the job we hired him for. But he gets votes because he funnels taxpayer money back to these cities. It's how the political system works, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We need to get servant leaders in to fix it that will stand up and vote for the people. You think you will do better than him? Um, I'm not scared and I will stand for the people. I will make noise when they're doing things that are wrong. I will talk to these other believers in our legislature and encourage them in God's word how they can stand righteously for the people. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we can make a difference to, to turn things around. I'm not going to abstain from voting. I'll show up and vote every time and I'll vote for the people. If we talk about the deep state, California is like a deep, deep, deep mm. place. Mm. And you're gonna be in there. Is there any strategy? Do you have any allies up there in Sacramento? If there are a couple of allies up there, mm -hmm. um, not many. We do have a super majority of Democrats. I think I may even find some allies in that party. I think it's possible if they're Bible-believing Christians. But mostly I'm gonna find them within the Republican Party because that's usually where, where you're gonna find Bible-believing, Jesus-following Christians. What I'm hoping is that God will raise up a lot of people in this season that follow him to be in the legislature. The You First team of candidates, um, Eric Ching, I call him our leader. I believe God's given him the mantle of leadership for our little group. And he, he gave him the slogan, You First, which means God first and the people first. And he's running for U.S. House of Representatives, District 38. Yes. Then you have me running for State Senate, District 30. We almost perfectly overlap. Then we have Jessica Martinez running for Assembly District, California State Assembly, District 64. Reverend Raul Ortiz running for California State Assembly District, uh, I'm sorry, Jessica's running for 56 and Raul's running for 64. All of our districts overlap. All four of us made it past the primaries. And I know of many other good, solid, conservative Christians that are running for our state assembly and state senate right now. If we can get enough of us there, we have a lot of allies. And with God, it doesn't take an army. We know with uh, Gideon, he shrunk it down to those small few. And I believe the small few that we can get in there are bold and ready to stand up. We can turn things around for our state. All right, thank you for coming. Do you have any last thing you want to say to our audience? Well, you know, I, I think I said it the last time, and I'll say it again, is get up and get involved. People think that it's not for us regular people, but if the regular people don't get up and get involved, we're going to end up with more career politicians. So stand up, get involved. If we get good people in, we can turn things around. Yeah, and then uh, remember, when we vote, we don't vote for the party We vote for people who represent us. The one that's getting the vote are not there to lead us, but to represent us. So what kind of people we are, we will vote for what kind of people. If your value system is like this guy right here. Get up and run. <laughs> All right, thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day, everyone. Gotcha 晚上七点在国际大使命教会呈现一出以反映现实为题材的音乐话剧布道会除了舞台剧这次聚会还包括音乐和敬拜由叶郭立香牧师指导的水仙合唱团也将在聚会中献唱千万不要错过最后两场压